In this video, we're going to look at a couple of examples of calculating and interpreting the chi-square statistic when we have two discrete variables. Here's our first example. Data were collected by a researcher that looked at the type of weapon used to commit a crime and whether the criminal was white or black. Our null hypothesis is that race and type of weapon used to commit a crime are not related, that they're independent of each other. The alternative hypothesis is that race and weapon used are related or associated with each other. Let's take a quick look at the measurements here. We measure race by whether a person is black or white. Obviously that's a discrete dichotomous, non, a non-orderable discrete dichotomous measurement. Our weapons measure has several categories, firearm, knife, blunt object, hands and feet. We can tell from those categories that this is also a discrete a non-orderable discrete measurement. When we look at the intersection of two discrete variables, chi-square is the appropriate sampling distribution to use and statistic to calculate. So for step two in hypothesis testing, since both variables are discrete, we're going to use the chi-square sampling distribution. Step three, how much evidence do we need to reject the null hypothesis? I'm going to set alpha equal to 0.01. I have a 4 by 2 table, so I have 3 degrees of freedom. Going to the table in the back of the book, I can see that chi-square critical is 11.34. And I'll show you this on another slide, how to find that particular chi-square critical number. Step 4. We have to go out and collect data and analyze them and produce our chi-square statistic. And step 5. We need to make a statistical decision about whether we reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis by comparing our chi-square calculated to our chi-square critical. Here's a chi-square distribution table from the back of the book. I set alpha at 0 0.01. I have three degrees of freedom. I look at the intersection of those two values and I can see that my chi-square critical is 11.3449. That means that when I calculate my chi-square, if I get a value less than this number, I'm going to fail, fail to reject the null and conclude that there's no relationship between these two discrete non-orderable measures. If I get a statistic that is greater than that value, a chi-square calculated greater than 11.3449, I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. I'm going to conclude that there is a statistical relationship between these measures. And if I've made an error, I've made a type 1 error with the probability equal to 0 0.01. Let's go ahead and calculate the statistic. The table in the upper left shows the raw values. Of the white respondents or white criminals, 206 used a firearm, 74 used a knife, 19 used some kind of blunt object, and 23 used their hands or feet. The equivalent numbers for the black criminals are 608, 222, 49, and 54. The table at the bottom shows the expected values of each cell. Those are calculated by uh, multiplying the marginal, the row marginal, times the column marginal, and dividing by the table total. For example, if I look at white respondents, sorry, white criminals who used a firearm in committing their crime, I'm going to multiply 814, the row marginal, times 322, the column marginal, and divide by the total number of criminals, in this case 1,255. I discover that I should observe about 208 white criminals who used a firearm in the commission of a crime, and that's compared to the 206 I actually observed. We're going to calculate the expected values for all of those cells so that we'll have the observed and the expected, and then we're going to put them into a table to make it easier to calculate our chi-square statistic. Here's the table. Again, to make this table, I just take all the cells of that original cross-tabulation table, and I just list them in order. So for the white criminals, I have use of a firearm, a knife, blunt object, hands and feet. And then for the black criminals, use of a firearm, knife, blunt object, or hands and feet. I list out my expected values, then my observed values, and then in the last column I calculate my cell chi-squared statistic. You can see that this is really easy to do if you know how to use a spreadsheet. Just by entering those observed values, we can calculate the expecteds very easily and then the cell chi-square chi statistics very easily. Summing them all up, I get a chi-square statistic, an overall chi-square of 1.0218. Obviously, that's a lot smaller than 11.34, so I'm going to fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that white and black criminals use this. There's no difference in the kinds of weapons they use in the commission of their crimes. 
Let's look at an example out of the general social survey and let's look at computer output that would be very typical from something like SPSS or SAS, although in this instance I'm going to use STATA. In the general social survey, we have a variable that measures marital status, whether one's married, separated, widowed, divorced, or never married. We have another measurement which asks whether a woman should be allowed to have a legal abortion for any reason. Both of those variables are discrete, and so when I put them together and look at the intersection, I'm trying to understand if there's a relationship between marital status and attitudes about abortion. Since both variables are discrete, chi-square provides the appropriate sampling distribution. I'm going to set alpha equal to 0 0.01. The table I'm going to show you in a minute is a 5 by 2 table, and so I have 4 degrees of freedom. Using the table in the back of the book, alpha 0 0.01, degrees of freedom equal 4, I can see that my chi-square critical is 13.2767. Now we have to calculate, collect the data, and analyze them, and then make our comparison of chi-square calculated to chi-square critical. Here's what the data look like. You can see I've laid out my table in the right way. Across the columns, I have my independent variable. That is, I'm going to be comparing across marital status. Are married respondents different when it comes to attitudes about abortion than widowed respondents from divorced respondents compared to separated people or people who've never married? On my rows, I have whether people believe it should be okay, it's, it should be allowable, allowed for a woman to have a legal abortion or not. I've also presented this table in the right direction. Since I'm comparing across my columns, comparing married to widowed, for example, I percentage down or I percentage on the column totals. So I can see of all the married respondents, almost 40% of them, 39.44, believe that a woman should be allowed to have a legal abortion for any reason, compared to 31.47% of the widowed respondents. The one category that really stands out are the never marrieds. There you see, for people who are, of all the people who are never married, there's almost an exact 50-50 split between people who believe there should, that women should be allowed to have a legal abortion and those that think they should not. The split is 51.62 to 48.38, pretty close to 50-50. All of the other splits are closer to 60-40 or 70-30. There are bigger gaps. Yet when we look across the columns, our real area of interest is to compare married to widowed to divorced, we can see that overwhelmingly people who are not married believe that a woman should be allowed to have a legal abortion for any reason and that the group that has the lowest agreement with that statement are the people who are separated. Now if you look at the bottom of that cross tabulation table on the left, that table was produced by Stata, very typical what you get from a statistical software application. It gives us our Pearson chi-square, which in this case is 46.1887. We know that with a 5 by 2 table, it means I have 4 degrees of freedom, and alpha 0 0.01, my chi-square critical is about 13. 46 is obviously greater than 13, so I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. This table also gives me the p-value, and here it's listed as pr equals 0.000. .000. This doesn't actually mean that the p-value is equal to zero. We only need p-values reported to three decimal places because our major alpha values that we use are alpha 0 0.05, 0 0.01, and 0 0.001. Therefore, any p-value less than those things would lead us to reject the null under all three circumstances. And so we're only going to report three decimal places of precision here for this p-value. There is a p-value. It could be in the fifth or sixth or tenth decimal place but it's clearly smaller than 0 .001. So our conclusion here, number one, there's a statistically significant relationship between marital status and attitudes about abortion. Number two, it appears that the group of the marital status most favoring abortion are people who are never married, and the marital group least favoring abortion is, are the people who are separated. Number three, the magnitude of the difference. We see differences here of almost 20 percentage points for some of our categories, but as low as 8 percentage points for others. So somewhere between an 8 percentage point difference and a 20 percentage point difference, we're concluding that there's a pretty substantive and important difference about one's marital status and how it, is, and how it relates to attitudes about abortion. One last thing to look at. If you have a 2 by 2 table, 
it's often easier to use the formula I'm going to show you here. It looks a little complicated, but it's really not as long as, again, you lay your table out in the right way. Here I've taken the example of capital punishment, whether you believe in capital punishment or don't believe in capital punishment, and I'm looking at the relationship with race. I have two variables, each with two categories. Race is coded as white and black. Capital punishment is coded as favoring or opposing. So the intersection of those two measures is a two by two table. With that two by two table, we can use the formula below. I've laid this out so that my independent variable is race, my dependent variable is capital punishment, and again, I percentage the table in the appropriate way. We can see a very large difference in attitudes about capital punishment comparing white to black, with white respondents overwhelmingly favoring capital punishment. 74% of all the white respondents favor capital punishment compared to 43% of the black respondents. I won't go through all the details of the formula. You can look at the slide and see where the numbers come from. But just note, if I take the table on the left with our raw or observed values, and I replace them with letters in the other table, the cells are A, B, C, and D, then you can see that all the values we need to plug into this formula, what are called the pro cross products, B times C times A times D, and the marginals, a plus C, B plus D, and so forth, and the table total, A plus B plus C plus D, can all be calculated based on the observed frequencies in that particular table. When I do that, I get a chi-square statistic of 149.78, and again, our typical statistical question is, I observe a chi-square, I know the chi-square should be close to zero if there's no relationship between these measures. I observe a value closer to 150. The question is, is that 150 large enough for me to reject the null hypothesis? In this case, if I set alpha equal to 0 0.001 with, and with um, one degree of freedom, my chi-square critical is 10.828, and I would reject the null hypothesis because my calculated chi-square, 150, is greater than my chi-square critical of approximately 11. And again, we notice that the magnitude of the difference is nearly 30 percentage points comparing the white and black respondents who favor capital punishment.